In this free CAD tutorial, I'll show you how to use reference images to create an actual to scale part. The example project that I'm using is a broken fridge door shelf where the lip snapped off causing the shelf to fall and cause even more damage. I'm going to make the lip and collar to replace the missing lip and reinforce the crack size. I took two photos from the top XY plane, a traced outline of the outer perimeter of the shelf on paper that acts as my main guide and a photo of the actual shelf itself used to locate and size the collar correctly. For accurate tracing in FreeCAD, it's important to capture each image as close to a flat orthographical view as possible. A flatbed scanner is ideal for this, but since not every subject fits on a scanner, good camera technique can achieve a similar result. Three key tips to help minimize distortion is to keep the camera perfectly perpendicular to the surface you're photographing. I use a slimline phone mount for my tripod and position it directly above my subject. Secondly, use a bright, even lighting to avoid shadows or overexposed areas. These can hide important details. A standard ceiling light casts hard shadows as the light is directly from above. I use a bright LED work light, shone directly upwards and bounced off a white ceiling. This creates an even light, eliminating shadows. Thirdly, is to stand back and use optical zoom. By shooting from far away and zooming in, we reduce perspective distortion which results in an image that behaves more like a flat scan. After we have our images, we can import them into FreeCAD using the top menu, File Import. Both images need a known scale. This can be a ruler, a marked dimension, or any object of a known size placed on the same plane as the part. On the paper outline, I drew a 50 millimeter line using a ruler. So I could use that to scale the image. To scale the first image in FreeCAD, double click the image in the tree view and this opens the image tool panel. By selecting the calibrate button, we can left click on the start and the end of the reference line, enter the known distance, in this case 50 millimeters, and then the image will automatically scale. Same process is repeated for the second image. You notice that I've forgotten to add a reference for the second image, which wasn't an issue. I just measured a known feature on the shelf and used that dimension to calibrate. You can even use measurements taken from the first image, which is already scaled. After calibration, both images just need to be positioned. Double clicking on the image in the tree view also lets you adjust the transparency, which makes it easy to align key edges of both reference images before tracing. With the reference images in place, I created a new body and started sketching. I hid the reference image of the shelf and worked with the main contour trace. The second image was to fill in extra detail afterwards. Two sketcher tools that were especially helpful in this case was the polyline tool, especially changing the mode with the M key. For example, to sketch an arc within a polyline, first sketch the line going up to the arc, click the arc starting point, then hover over the end point. After pressing M to switch to arc mode, we see in this case that the arc is almost correct. We just need slight movements of the mouse to adjust the arc. Then we can place the point of the arc by left clicking again. Moving to the next point will give you a tangent line, which we may have to press M again if we need a non-tangent segment. The other tool that was really helpful was a constraint and that was the block constraint. The block constraint locks selected geometry in place. This is great when you have portions of a polyline positioned correctly, but still need to fine tune connected arcs. Blocking the already corrected line prevents it from shifting while you're adjusting other elements. Since this was a quick one-off repair, I didn't worry too much about fully constraining the sketch and relied heavily on the block constraint. Once the lip profile was finished, I created a pad operation upwards. This gave it thickness. After that, I made a new sketch on the bottom of the face of the pad. This would define the inner collar. I hid the traced outline photo and use the shell photo instead so I could follow the actual inner edge geometry. This inner profile was then padded straight downwards. I needed to strengthen the part by adding fillets along the edges and often found the reference image would get in the way of selecting edges. It's best to hide these images when you get to this stage. When the model was finished, I selected the body and exported it to a 3MF file, ready for the slicer. I'm using PTEG for its impact resistance and toughness. The final print fitted perfectly. 
Once I glued everything into place, the repaired shelf slid back into its slots exactly as intended. I hope that video was of interest and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. If you like what you see and you want to donate to the channel, then you can do so via Ko-Fi or Coffee at ko-fi.com forward slash M-A-N-G-0 or via PayPal at paypal.com forward slash paypal me forward slash Darren B. E. Stone. I also run a Patreon where you can get early access and additional content. And that's at patreon.com forward slash mango jelly solutions. Links can be found in the channel header on the about page or in the descriptions of these videos. I thank everybody that's donated so far. It really helps to keep the lights on so I can produce more content and also expand the channel. Thank you for liking, commenting and subscribing to these videos and I hope to see you again in the next one.